What's up guys? It's Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We're back with another video and I hope everyone's having a great Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to my dad. I know you're out there watching. Uh, anyway guys, so it's been a crazy week here in Charleston. Um, the weather has been dreary and rainy and it really, as you're going to see, it really had an effect on our business. Um, so <clears throat> we're starting off with our one of our car, um, I guess, car shops. And as you can see, so the inventory is low, but that's because we haven't really stocked this machine up in a while. This machine has been, you know, this location is our, definitely our worst location. And you can see, we don't really give it all the love it needs because uh, quite honestly, you're gonna see when we collect just how, how poorly this machine does. Um, if things don't pick up this summer at this location, I'm definitely gonna be moving this machine to another location. Um, so I'm taking a quick inventory. So it, was, you know, it seems like you know, things are low and like I said, we did have some bad weather this week, and let's talk about that. So, when when you have bad weather, do you find that your sales are down in your vending locations? Um, I'm really seeing that, especially this week here, because we had, like I said, we had cloudy days. Um, it, the, the actual temperatures were cool compared to what they usually are here in South Carolina. As a matter of fact, one of the local news stations actually put up like a, an infographic that um, these days, um, like June 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th compared to January 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 2020. Um, January was actually warmer here in Charleston than it was here in June. So I think that really did have an effect on our uh, sales this week, uh, as you're gonna see. But anyway, so another thing that's been crazy is inventory, guys. So are any of you struggling with finding inventory or finding deals on inventory? So typically I like to use the Flip app and I like to check and see what stores, what grocery stores mainly, are having soda sales. You know, sometimes we'll see a great sale like four 12 packs for $10. That's probably my favorite sale if I can ever find it. I haven't seen it in a while, but that's one of the ones I really do like. Uh, we also have, um, I think, three for 10 sometimes we get, or three, you know, four for 11, four for 12, and different things like that. Uh, usually it's a combination of multiple 12 packs for a certain price. Um, one grocery store also even does buy two get three free which um, usually what I'd like to do is I like to kind of figure out exactly what I'm paying per can so for example on the four for ten so you got ten you're spending ten dollars and you're getting 48 cans of soda so with that uh, it averages less than 25 cents per can um, and that's usually how I try to figure out what my margins are and different things like that and what, what my price per can is so this week though our sales were just awful um, most of them, no Coke products were on sale anywhere. And the sales did involve Pepsi products. Um, and the ones that were on sale are not the ones that I needed. For example, um, our break and alignment shop, they, um, they do the mug root beer, which is a Pepsi product. And they drink a lot of it. Um, I did stop this week, actually, yeah, earlier this week, off camera, I didn't film my, my, my trip. I didn't do a collection, but I just did some inventory stock up. Um, they were, again, they were out of root beer, and I had two 12-packs, luckily, uh, and they were also out of Coca-Cola, so I threw a little bit of that in there as well. So we're going to be going back to that location this coming week to make sure their stocks are doing good, because that one, that, that, that one when, when it gets hot, the snack machine goes, the sales go way down on the snack machine, and the soda machine sales go way up. So what I think I'm going to end up doing at that location is probably pulling some of the snacks out of the machine and moving them to some of our other locations, because... There's no point in having that machine stocked to the max when sales aren't being made. And it's just, you know, during the summer, the sales go down on that machine. But it is what it is, guys. So um, we're just finishing stocking up here at the car shop. Uh, I did put, um, actually, I bought a 24-pack of Sprite. Because uh, this, this location does do pretty well with Sprite when we have it. So I actually broke down. Like I said, there weren't any good sales. I broke down. I went to Walmart. I bought cases of Coke, I bought cases of Sprite at Walmart. I've never bought inventory at Walmart before. Um, but it was $6.98 for a 12, no, I'm sorry, $6.98 for a 24 pack, which roughly breaks down to less than 30 cents per can. So with that said, um, I like to try and keep my price per unit as low as possible. But when there's no sales and you're having trouble finding inventory, you got to do what you got to do. All right, so here's what I'm talking about with this location. So there's a small handful of coins. And this has been probably a three-week collection at this location. Maybe two. Let's check the, uh, the cash box. Uh, yeah, another disappointing collection, guys. Look at that. There's maybe, I don't know, less than 10 ones. So, again, if things don't pick up at this location, 
it's going to really start to think about time to pulling this location to finding a new a new spot for this machine because we're just wasting our time at this one so hopefully things pick up but the cooler weather probably did have an effect on it so let's move on to our next location it is our laundromat and this one is always one of our top performers so what we're going to do today is we're going to obviously do our inventory, we're going to do our collection, but we're also going to do some service on this machine because this machine has been having issues with coin jams and different things like that. So we want to um, go through that coin mech, but we're also going to clean the machine pretty well. Um, since it's an outdoor machine and they do um, use like a, like a leaf blower to clean their sidewalks and everything, the bottom of the machine every now and then, you, you got you to you pull all the junk out of it. It's full of pine straw, it's full of like candy wrappers leaves all kinds of stuff like that so first thing I'm going to do though before we get to that is I'm going to do all the service to the machine I'm going to do inventory which as you can see uh, you know we stocked the machine machine up pretty full last time and it's still pretty full so it looks like the weather is going to have an effect on this location as well as much as I'm unhappy about that because you know this like I said, this location always does so great but also notice too look at our grape Fanta sodas um, there's two in there left and the sold out light is on so which that means the the um the inventory switch is is unset so therefore we can't sell grape soda in this location right now because there aren't any and talking getting back to that inventory thing i was talking about i literally went to every store <laughs> in the area i went to every grocery store i checked all the walmarts i checked targets i checked um Dollar General, I checked Family Dollar, I checked everything, every place I could think of to try and find some Grape Fanta in cans and I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> Anytime I'd go to a store, um, there'd be plenty of Orange Fanta, um, but the spot next to it where the Grape Fanta would normally be would be either empty or there would be something else in its place. So that was pretty disappointing, guys. So, uh, you know, this location, our, our customers here love the Grape, the grape Fanta. Um, it always does really well with sales and because we can't stock it, Hopefully they don't take their business elsewhere. Hopefully they can uh, settle for a Fanta Orange or maybe one of the other sodas that we have here at this location. Um, because yeah, it, it's been really crazy. I even, it's funny, I even tagged uh, Fanta on, on Instagram and they actually responded to me and said they'd help me try and find some in my area. But so far, neither of us have had any luck. So shout out to Fanta guys. At least um, at least thanks for, for reaching out on Instagram and for you know, doing what you could to try and help you find some inventory because, you know, happy, we all want happy customers. So I appreciate the help, guys. And uh, if you find some, let me know. If, if you see Grape Fanta in your area, uh, you know, let me know if you're seeing it it's sold out in your area as well. Put it in the comments, guys. Do you see Grape Fanta when you're when you're buying your inventory? Um, it's pretty unfortunate that I can't find it. All right, but as you can see, we just stocked that, that case, that case of Coke. That's the first, between the Sprite and, and this case of Coke, those are the first cases of soda I've bought. Um, for inventory uh, the whole time I've had the business um, I'm always focused on the 12 packs because you can usually get the better deals uh, when buying 12 packs um, but pretty soon guys you know if uh, if the prices are, keep going the way they are I'm gonna have to start buying it my soda at Sam's also I buy my snacks at Sam's currently but I don't buy my soda at Sam's because I think it, it averages like 31 cents per can and I'm still able to get it cheaper um, at the grocery stores and things like that so guys, put it in the comments. You know, what 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 are you having trouble with in your vending business? And it does the, the weather affect your vending business as well? Um, yeah, here I am. Uh, I actually had one of my 12 packs of Mountain Dew open up in the car. So I'm, you know, moving a couple by hand and kind of being real ginger about it. So that way I'm not dropping them and, and damaging cans. Because, you know, damaged cans can jam up a machine as well. And as you can see, everything that I can't fit in my columns, I just automatically put right there on that Diet Mountain Dew because it never sells quite like everything else does. So with that said, we'll go ahead and finish up stocking everything up and then it's gonna be time to do our collection. Uh, we're gonna see just how disappointing our collection was at this location this week and you can already tell being by how much inventory was already in the machine when I opened it up. So because there was so much, I knew the collection wasn't gonna be great. So let's go ahead and get our, all of our inventory taken care of. I think that might be our last one. Yeah, okay, so it's time to do our collection. So next, we're going to uh, pull the coins and then pull the bills. And when I open up the coin bucket, I'm like, what is this? There's like no coins in there, guys. I'm like, is there a problem with the machine? We've never had such a light amount of coins in the coin bucket before. All right, let's pull the dollar bills. Maybe everyone's using dollars this week. And 
Yeah, see so guys, it's really not that great either. Um, it's been a poor week for collections. Now, of course, this is only two of our locations, two of our machines, and we did have some terrible weather. And when I say terrible weather, I mean, it was like in the, in the low 60s and mid 60s and dreary and rainy and stuff like that. So, you know, I realize that's not terrible weather for a lot of people. Um, but here, in, here in, in South Carolina, when that happens, a lot of people just stay home. They don't want to deal with, uh, with driving in the rain, uh, different things like that. It is what it is. All right, so next I'm moving on to cleaning the coin mech, and I'm really focusing on the area where the coins actually go in. Now, I've had a lot of contradicting information where people say, you know, use WD-40. Other people say, don't use WD-40. So right now, I'm trying it without any type of WD-40 or any other kind of oil or lubricant or stuff like that, um, and just making sure that it's very clean because that, um, you know, obviously can jam coins up or get things stuck. So I'm going through the coin mech. I just clean the, the chute part where uh, the coins go into the coin mech, and that's usually where I see the jam start is right in that area so I'm just cleaning everything else I'm gonna pop a couple quarters out and I'm gonna run some quarters through it and make sure everything's working again because we had so few coins in the coin bucket um, for this collection so it makes me wonder is everything working right so when you come across that you always want to make uh, make some some tests make sure things are working so I'm gonna put a few quarters in see if it bends and see if there's any issues and one of the quarters fell all the way through during the change return so I gotta fish that out and put it back in in order to have this, the machine work for us here. So now that I've done that, it should bend no problem. There we go. All right, so everything's working like it should be. And again, we're just gonna chalk it up to the weather. Um, <laughs> and sometimes too, when you, when you bend one, you can't fit it back in the top column. So I had to put that on the diet mountain dew column as well. All right, now that we got that um, coin mech cleaned, uh, coins are running through it okay, it's time to clean the rest of the machine. And this part is, like I said, this this is the challenging part. It's kind of gross um, because with an outdoor machine, you never know what you're going to find. There's always a bunch of leaves and sticks and wrappers and grossness. Pine straw here in the south we get a lot of. Um, but also spiders, bugs, <laughs> you know, different things like that. So you always got to be careful. You never know what you're going to put your hands into. And that's why I'm going to put on some gloves when I'm actually getting into the deep part of the machine. Um, because you never know what you're going to find. And, you know, there's, there's snakes here. There's snakes that are poisonous. You, so you definitely want to protect yourself and make sure you're being cautious when you're um, putting your hands in places where you can't always see or where you're not sure what might be hiding in there. So take note, guys. Always be careful when you're doing that kind of stuff. Make sure you're doing everything you can to be safe. Um, but this machine did need a good wipe down as well. It's been in the rain. It's been, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, just grossness on this machine. So everything we're getting all cleaned off. All right, next I'm going to pull a grocery bag out. We're gonna start cleaning out the bottom of the machine. And this is something you definitely wanna do on a regular basis. Um, I don't, obviously I don't do it on every trip to this location, but it's something you wanna do on a regular basis because what'll happen is all those leaves and wrappers and pine straw and all that junk will get all caught up in your condenser unit and around your fan and it'll cause it to, to work harder. And when it's working harder, you know, obviously it can burn itself out. It can cause other problems. So you definitely want to make sure you're keeping things clear so that the airflow can move uh, through properly and you're not uh, causing extra work to be done by that condenser unit. All right, so look at me, I'm just pulling all this crud out of there. There's leaves, and we got candy wrappers, there we go. Uh, and all that pine straw that gets stuck in there. And, and again, a lot of this is because this location, when they do clean the outside of the building, they just use a leaf blower and just blow everything all over, all, all over the place, all over to the side, and usually it ends up over by our machine here, which is why this machine is so full of crud at the bottom of it. Look at all that yuck, yuck grossness I'm pulling out. Just wet leaves, and pine straw, and wrappers, and a bunch of spider webs. So, you know, we do have spiders that live in this machine, and we've had to, you know, clean spiders out of the dollar bill acceptor and things like that before. So now I'm breaking up a broom. I'm going to try and get in there where my hands can't get in there and just pull all the crud out of there. Um, make sure everything's nice and clear and clean. Um, and even though the customers don't see this, it's still a good, like I said, it's still good practice because uh, it'll cause your machine to work harder when you don't, definitely don't want it to. All right, I'm just pulling all the extra crud out, anything I can get out of there, making sure that uh, that condensation tray is clear of any debris. Um, and then, after we use the broom, we're going to use the trick that they use. We're going to pull out our leaf blower. I brought my leaf blower along um, just to make sure I could get everything cleared out. Uh, some of those, especially some of those cobwebs and spider webs in there, um, some of them you just can't see or you can't reach. So 
I'm going to bring out the big guns here after I sweep up my mess. And that's another thing, guys. When, you're, when you are cleaning your machines, don't leave your work area a mess. For customers to see or for the location to see, that's a good way for them to get upset with you and then you know possibly ask you to, to remove your machine. Um, this is a great location. Even though it didn't do so well this week, we want to make sure we're maintaining a good relationship with, uh, with the business owners. Um, yeah, so also, it looks like somebody had a beer while they were here, so I'm going to clean that up for them too. We'll throw it right here in their dumpster. All right, now that we got that done, time to break out the big guns. And that's right, I brought my leaf blower, and this is a, a Ryobi battery-powered leaf blower, so I don't have to worry about um, you know, gas or you know, oil mixtures, anything like that. Um, I know it's kind of tough to see with my camera angle, but um, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of giving the machine a good blowout so that way any other leaves that I couldn't reach or see or behind that condenser unit or anything like that are getting you know, blown out of the way. Any cobwebs, all that stuff is getting taken care of, um, especially up around the door, the seals, everything like that. I want to make sure it's nice and clear. All right, after we get that taken care of, it's gonna be time to lock the machine up and then we'll blow the area around the machine, give it a final wipe down, and then we have to give our location their commission as well. So stick around guys, you'll get to see the inside of the laundromat again. And you know, we had talked about putting a claw machine in here and I'm not so sure that that's going to work out in our advantage um, in this location, only because it's a 24 hour laundromat. Uh, they do have security cameras, but there's no, there's no actual security. And this week, I've just seen so many, so many things in my Facebook groups, uh, especially of at laundromats. Um, one of one of the one of the videos I saw was security footage. Uh, it was a coin pusher in a laundromat, and the person was they, they picked up one of the stools and they were just beating the glass of the of the uh, coin pusher, and obviously until it shattered, and they were able to steal all the money and quarters out of it. So. That makes me really nervous about putting other machines in this location. I'd probably put a snack machine in this location, but I'm really starting to rethink the whole claw machine or other type of amusement game device for this location. It just, it just makes me nervous. Um, but with that said, let's give the machine a final wipe down. We're going to wipe down the sides, make sure everything's nice and clear. Uh, the other side definitely, definitely needed it because I don't know if you're able to see here, but right, right in the E of the Pepsi, it's starting to get like a mildew uh, right there. So we definitely want to make sure that's nice and clear because we don't want our, our customers to see uh, our machine looking gross. They're definitely not going to want to buy our product if our, if our machine is not presentable. So that's why we're going to make sure things are nice and clean and everything's nice and serviced. But no point in doing actual um, money counts this week because as you can see, we didn't do very well. And that's going to be okay. So let's give the, this location their commission and then we'll wrap the video up for the week. Comment down below, guys, if there's something you want to see um, vending-wise or arcade-wise. Um, we've had all kinds of different videos lately uh, regarding arcade and vending machines. So if there's something you want to see or you have questions about vending or arcade machines, put them down in the comments. That way I'll give something to answer for you. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for sticking around and watching all the way to the end of the video. You know, like I said, our channel is growing and we thank you everyone for your support. So if you could, please make sure you click that subscribe button and click the bell notification button. That way you're notified when our new videos go live. Again, guys, thanks for so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up and comment down below. This is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.